how-to video with uh, this Twisted Bill Speedino. So, um, as you can see here, this is actually the unit out of my Firebird. And this is going to be the box I'm going to put the unit in afterwards. Um, we're going to do a firmware update on this. So, there's been a firmware release since I started playing with this, and I want to show you guys how to update it. Also, the case has been redesigned. This one was the first case I ever made. It only has four holes at the bottom, which I want six. Or I wanted six. That, the new one's got six. And these little tabs probably will break off the second I try to bolt anything onto them. So, I redesigned the case where it's got nice, heavy-duty tabs that are actually part of the body, not part of the base itself. So, the base... If you see here, I mean, see how the, the base is separate from the from the mounting tabs. So the mounting tabs have quarter inch holes on them, and that will allow me to mount it into the car nice and sturdy. And as I said, it has got six holes. So this one's got some crap in it still. I didn't realize that before I made the video. Anyway, so um this will be for the Firebird. It's actually a little bit of a goofed up case with the print, so that's why I just I don't really care with my own car, but I can't use it for anyone else's. So, figured I'd just keep it, use it in the Firebird, and go from there. So, as I said, nice and labeled now, but we're going to get dive right into how to do this. So, uh, these Speedinos, you can't update with them in car, you can't update them with power hooked to them, or the firmware update. So, you need to take the base off and as I said the new bases the ones I will be shipping with customers once they're through beta testing um, have six bolts in them this one only has four it takes a small little screwdriver and you're gonna take and remove the four screws There's, this, there's the four bolts. Now this this bottom will come off, and this is my version, or this is the one out of my Firebird. So um, try not to let it touch any metal surface. Hold it by the edges of the board, so that way you don't like get static electricity going through it or anything like that. So and just like that, you have it off. So you got the board out. And that's what it looks like. I'm actually going to lay it right in here. Again, touch always touch it by the edges of the board. And try to ground yourself. I'm not grounded right now. I probably should be. But um, I'm grabbing the last tool I need. So, you know, tools you need for the job. Obviously, a small Phillips head screwdriver. Uh, whatever tools you need to get the box out of the car. Um, and you need the USB cord. Either the one I supplied you or you can get a different one. Um, I didn't bring the other one in for my car. Um, some some cars have a lot of RMF from the ignition, so having ferrite beads on both ends of the cable, like a cable of ferrite beads and good shielding, is kind of nice. This one seems to be working fine for me. And definitely for like in here, you don't need anything big. The one provided that I will sell with these, um, or you know, include with these, works just fine. So next up. Because it's it's powered by our our Arduino, Arduino uh, Mega Twenty Five Sixty. Um, whenever you hook, like for instance, if the engine's running and you hook the USB from there to the the lap the tuning laptop, which I need to get back, coming back online here. There we go. Um, it will automatically reboot the Mega Twenty Five Sixty, which means it will shut the engine off midstream whenever you hook it up, which is not something you want to happen. So that is the main reason why you need to disassemble it to update the firmware. Because of the fact, when I designed this board, I borrowed um, Weaver Markle's circuit, thank you Weaver, um, for boot protection. So if you look at the board and move out the wideband wiring out of your way, let me see if I can, right here, it says, let me see if I can get this to focus. See how it says boot protect right there? And it points to the boot protection jumper, which is JP10. Take a pair of needleless pliers and pull that jumper. Just pull it right off like that. That's it. Set the jumper down. That takes the voltage coming in from the boot protection and um, 
allows this to reboot, which it has to reboot during a firmware update. So that's all you have to do though. So you don't have to take the board off, the like the Arduino Mega board off of the Speedino board or anything like that. You just have to pull that one jumper and you're good to go. So now we're gonna hook up the USB cord. And again, set this in a, you know, either set it in a plastic housing like you see me doing here, or set it somewhere where it's not gonna touch metal or anything so it doesn't short out. Um, but hook it up there after the boot protection jumper is off. Then you hook it into your computer. Computer will recognize it. Let me move this over here so you can see what's going on next. So, as I said, everything's hooked up um, and it's hooked up into there. So now what you're gonna do is you need to go to uh, speedino.com. Actually, I will bring that up. I should have Wi-Fi down here. So. Speedino.com firmware, which is right here on the on the side right here. Bring that up. So there's two different versions. There's the easy method, and then there's the manual compiling. I'm going to show you the easy method. So uh, the manual compiling I can show in a later video if you're doing some custom stuff with your firmware. But really, for the purpose of this video, um, most customers are only going to be using the easy installation and at this point, if you're doing the manual installation, you already know what you're doing. So, so anyway, you need to uh, download, if you have 32-bit or 64-bit, you just need to click the link and download the software and install it. So I already have it downloaded and installed. I'm going to close out of this. And I have a link set right to my uh, desktop where it says Speedy Loader. So open that up. You're going to want to click Run. If it brings up a dialog like that, and it's going to come up. Just give it a second, this is an old laptop. So Speedino Universal Formula Loader. Right now, the Speedino has the 2019-09 in it. You want to go to the 2019-11. And actually, we're going to hold on for just a second. So we're going to actually get back out of here. This is going to be a note to self moment. If you have your Speedino, like if you buy a Speedino from me, you get in the car, get it tuned, get it running, and you want to try new Speedino soft or firmware, um, you need to probably save your old tune-up first just to have a safe backup. So what you're going to want to do is bring up Tuner Studio. This is going to be assuming you already have it all connected and everything. I'm going to make another how-to video how to connect a brand new blank one. But um, this one I already have had. So this one's considered for Speedino prototype. It's the one the fiber. Yep. So and I got to change the connections because I have it set for Bluetooth right now and it's not Bluetooth. So I'm on COM8, except there we go. So um, once you have the Tuner Studio and you can see this thing's not happy right now because it's not connected to the engine computer, or sorry, not connected to the car, um, what you're going to do is file save tune as and then save the tune um, I'm going to do some kind of custom label so I'm going to do the 2019-09 firmware last tune and then I'm going to do a date of 1-5-2020 so as you can see there that is my custom label for the tune up you're going to save it and there you go. So that's done. So now you're going to shut off Tuner Studio. And then you're going to reopen Speedino Loader, loader run it. Give my slow computer a minute to think. So we're going to bump it up to 2019.11. We're going to hit choose port. We're on COM8. And then you're going to hit upload. All right. And it's going to go through. So this is where um, it's going to save the Tuner Studio definition file. That is a required need to know information. So if you click on it, it'll open it up. And it's right there. So this has the 2019-09, or sorry, 2019-11 configuration file. Actually, if I... 
Yeah, right there. So, if you already have it downloaded, it's not going to re-download it. I forgot I already had it downloaded, but for the sake of this how-to video, you'll you'll see it wherever it puts it. You'll just have to click it and it'll open it up. So, upload to RDO completed successfully. So, now that you've done that, you're going to exit. You're going to reopen Tuner Studio. And this is where things get a little interesting. So, um, you essentially blew absolutely everything out of the uh, Speedino whenever you did this. So, like, your um, TPS needs relearned and a couple other things need relearned. And I'll show you what's going on. So, we're going to open the last project, which is a Speedino prototype. So, firmware mismatch. So, we're going to update the ECU definition. And it's going to say, you know, the definition file, it, you know, I can't find it, yada, yada, yada. Open the correct one. So it saved it into downloads. So we're going to go uh, to my downloads folder. And we're going to do 2019.11. You're going to open it. And now it's going to be happy again. It's going to close the project. It's going to reopen it. There are errors during, yes, view them. So this is one that says it rescaled the MSQ values to match configuration. I was like, okay, that's fine. Um, you're going to file load tune. You're going to load the 2019 firmware tune. Open. And I know it says the tune file mismatch. You want to load anyway. Yes, you do. And yes, you want to send the current configuration. Review them, make sure nothing's crazy. Close. And that's it. So now, as I said, under tools, you're going to have to calibrate the TPS, which is right here. You'll get current, you'll get current, and then you'll hit accept. Like, you, for instance, you'll have the closed throttle. So you'll get the current with it at idle. You'll hold the throttle to the floor, uh, you know, engine off, key on, engine off. You'll get the current again, and you'll hit accept. It'll burn it. Now you're going to also go to calibrate pressure sensors. Um, we're using the MPX4250 on board. So that is that. I don't have the external borrow sensor hooked up yet. I plan on doing that soon. And then the EMAP sensor may get hooked up, may not. Um, I'm going to have it probably go into an auxiliary input. And I have another video coming out for that later. But you'll set those up. Uh, calibrate voltage reading, you'll calibrate the temperature sensors, which we use 3-point GM. You're going to write that to the controller. It's going to write to the controller. And then it should say you have to reboot. Just give it a minute. Write complete. Close. Yeah, it doesn't. Oh, that's weird. Um, AFR sensor. We are using... 14.7 uh, wideband. Actually, the one in the car is different currently. So, custom linear. Yep. So, the run in the car right now is my old 14.7 uh, wideband, which works with the 4.2 sensor. So, uh, 0 volts is 9 AFR, 5 volts is 19 AFR. The only reason it's like that right now is I just simply have not had time to install my own wideband. So, um, whenever you install mine, 0 volts will be 10 AFR, 5 volts will be 20. You'll write that to controller, it's going to write. Write complete, close. And then, that should be it. After that's all done, you'll want to start the engine up. Make sure that it is functional the way it's supposed to. Um, and go from there. So. I'm going to put you back on the bipod. Um, now that that's all done, you can actually just cancel or close out of Tuner Studio. And I'm going to put you back on the bipod, and we're going to show you how to finish up. So, let's get you moved back over here so you can see what's going on. All right. So now that that's done, unhook it from the computer. Again, grab it by the board edge. Unhook it from here. All right, 
So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to put it in the new case. And I need to grab two more screws. But... Okay, I'm going to have to pause the video. I didn't have the case 100% ready. So the pause of the video right now is just for me to finish up the bottom part of this case. And we're back. So uh, whenever I print these cases, I don't make these holes exact size. I actually make them small and then I drill them out to the exact size. I found out with built or printing like five of them. It seems to work out better that way. They hold, if you make them smaller, make them a very thick wall and then just drill them out where you need them to be. Um, they seem just to hold up better and work better. So that's what I did there. So that's why I had to pause the video. Anyway, so now that this is ready, you got to put your boot select jumper or boot protection jumper back in. So um, very easy. Grab it with a pair of nameless pliers, like so. Board edge again so you don't fry anything with static electricity. So JP10, the boot protection jumper. Let's go right on top. Push it down. Good to go. Installed. Ready to go back in. So grab my new case with my nice label on it. Um, and this, the USB port goes in first. So it goes like that into the case because it's got to go into the hole and then you just very slightly push it down just like that it goes in so again don't touch the the contacts just kind of push at the edges of the board make sure you're all the way in at that point the only one can go into the dumpster the new base right here just I'm going to clean off some of the plastic I for my drilling same thing this goes in just watch the corners they're more of an exact fit just press it down and then you'll start with the center and work your way out so um, these will go in one at a time So it's back together, back ready to go, drop in the car, and make sure it still runs. Um, so the if you're running the onboard map, the onboard map hole is right there, which I've shown you in the other videos. USB hole, obviously, and then the two amp seal connectors. But there you go. That's how you update the firmware on a Twisted Bill Speedino.